Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Unfiltered on Pastor Wire TV. You can accuse us of a lot of things. Uh, not being unfiltered is not one of them. A uh, little impromptu video for everybody that we think you will enjoy. Uh, I say impromptu. I apologize for the lighting. It looks a little dark on the screen, but uh, like I said, spur of the moment thing. We've got Johnny V, John Velasquez, Hall of Famer, uh, multiple Kentucky Derby winning rider, rides Messier in the run for the Roses on Saturday. Uh, Michael Wilson caught up with Johnny in Louisville. He was nice enough to give us a little of his time. Uh, Michael asked him some questions, had a nice little back and forth with him. We're going to try and bring Johnny back after the, the Derby for his take and maybe do the same with the Preakness in Belmont as well if things work out. Uh, we think you'll enjoy this video. Again, impromptu, unfiltered. That's us, John Stetton, Michael Wilson, unfiltered, past the wire TV, Derby weekend. We're here. You're there. Enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. Gentlemen, here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. All right, Johnny. Well, we're two days out from the big day. Obviously, tomorrow's the Kentucky Oaks, and then Saturday's the Derby. How are you feeling about everything? Good. Doing good, Brian. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you for coming on, you know, Pass the Wire TV with uh, the new show that we're doing called Unfiltered. It's awesome to have you on. Uh, thank you for having me, bro. So, yeah, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on kind of the horses you're riding, what you think the race is going to shape up like for you on Derby day and in the big race and just, you know, walk us through some of your thoughts on each individual one. Um, I think maybe the first question is how much do you think weather will come into play? Oh, we, we never know. Obviously we can count on the weather and, and it, I, whatever happens with the weather, we can't control it either. You know what I mean? So it's about how the horses, the horses handle the different, uh, you know, how the track changes basically, you know, and, and whatever likes the wet track and whatever doesn't like it, then, you know, too bad because <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so right. I don't really worry about those things, you know, because it's, it's about, you know, uh, how the horses are going to handle everything and, and 
even you have horses that you like and you don't know how they're going to handle the track and with all the weather or the wet um you gotta wait and see you know until the moment you get on the horse and, and the horse is back and that gate opens and then you know if the horse is going to like it so those those things that i i, I gotta put out of my out of my head you i prepare myself to ride the race the best that i can and see the competition see what everything is uh you know where you expect them to be uh, and then you go from there Gotcha. And then obviously from a trainer's point of view, we can kind of see in the morning timing of a stride, how a horse gets over a track and how they're handling it. And that kind of gives us a better idea of how they're going to handle muddy, sloppy, or, you know, fast track or whatever. From your perspective, is there a mental component that comes into play at these horses when they're running in the race, or does it come down to how they're handling it with their footing and their overall stride? Yeah, I think it's all about how they handle the stride on the need of healer. And, and but not only that, though, you know, it's like it, the kickback, how, how bad the kickback it is and where, the, where you sit and where you place your horse. Though, you know, so some, some, some horses handle it they went really well, you know, stride wise, basically uh, on the need of you. But when the kickback comes out of it, you know, they, they, they get discouraged right away. So it's all about the whole position where you are and if, can they handle the kickback as well. So it changes everything, though, really. Right, right. And then, obviously, as we know, as some of these horses come into these races, they're prepped in races where they're running against fewer horses. Now we're running against 20. How much, in terms of, is you on a jockey on, on their back, in terms of figuring out traffic and figuring out, how do you navigate some of those different things, and how much does it come into play with some of these younger horses? The thing, I mean, for, for me, I mean, the way I prepare myself, like, I, I want to know every horse like i go through through every horse's speed who has speed who doesn't have speed who's in the middle who's come from behind or you know and, and i want to try to place my horse uh on the best path 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 possible if you will you know that um i don't want to be on a horse behind a couple of horses that i know they're not going to take me long enough you know to worse or they're coming back early enough in the race um so those things you have to study obviously who has speed who doesn't have speed and the horses that i think that might not you know, have a as good chance than the other ones and who is best horses in the race. And you try to follow the horses who are who, who are at least in us and what the way you study the race that it has the best chance on the race. Right. And then usually you're typically riding races earlier on the card and have a feel for how the track is playing. Obviously when you have 20 horses in a race that changes a little bit. Are there also parts of it where you're trying to stay in a specific path that's a little bit better in terms of how the track oh, is absolutely. playing? Absolutely. Absolutely, you know, you, you like you said. So we we ride in races before before the big before the big races, and you you play how the track is playing, and uh, that all comes part of the strategy and how you're going to ride the race. So you know that's very important. You know how the track is changing, where the best path a uh, path in the race is, and, and the racetrack, uh, that all plays into that particular race that you're riding. But, you know that had to come oh part of the plan, if you will. Gotcha, and then. I know a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on post position personally, and, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. I think certain horses, you know, it depends on if you have early speed, what type of horse it is, but how much with specific horses do you think post position comes into play? At the post position, it comes to place when do you have a horse that is speed or close to, to close to the pace and it depends on where you are though, you know, so the horse that you don't want to be very inside, and you have the speed in the outside, that's when it comes a big place. You know, that, uh, okay, what am I, what am I supposed to do when I'm, I'm close positioning inside and I have three horses outside that, you know, had probably the same speed or more than me and my horse doesn't like to be in inside. That's when it comes to place that I compromise what you want to do with the horse and the position you want to do. So, or you come out running hard enough to make those horses go much faster and, you know, spread, spread, spread the, uh, the field where you can, tap the horse out or try to take the chances. Okay, I'm going to come out and let those horses go and try to settle behind them and hopefully I can get out and get out to the outside. So those things you have to have to play though. You know, that's when it, it, it becomes a thinking or a strategy. What, what are you going to do with your horse though, you know? And hopefully <laughs> it goes to your way. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's obviously in the heat of the race, you're trying mm -hmm. to figure out everything as it's all playing out. Um, and then obviously, and I, I don't know how many, normal people would understand this but how much comes into play about knowing your horse saving energy in the tank and when to use it at the right point in time 
No, it's, um, very, I mean, it's very important to save the best you can. And, and like I said, where you get compromises, how much you're going to use your, your horse to be in the position that you want to do, though, you know, and also not overdoing it, you know. So you want to use your horse the best you can and get a position you want without overdoing it, though, that you want to save some horse for the end. And those are the things that, you know, you're taking chances. Okay, how much that can I do without um, overdoing it or not doing enough? to get the position that I want. And that depends on the horse that you have and how the, the horse is gonna, gonna, is gonna handle that. It's all in seconds, really. I mean, you have to think and what's the feeling the horse is giving you to, to, do, to get the, the position you want and not overdoing it or not doing it enough to get to the position you want. Right, right. So coming into this race, you've got Messier, who to me, I think is one of the biggest threats in the race. I mean, watching him breeze recently looks phenomenal. How are you kind of feeling about his progression going into this race? I think um, he's doing really well. Everything I watch, everything I see, he's doing really, really well. After the race in Santa Anita, I thought he won a really good race. And, and, and I mean, to tell you the truth, like I, I said earlier today, I mean, I, I rode the race to beat the one horse uh, and I didn't want it given too much to do to my horse. And uh, and I know Tyba was there. I not liked him. I broke his maiden. I just didn't think he, he was going to step up from three quarters to mile and eighth. And I concentrated on one, on one horse in the race. So it backfired on, on my part, though, you know. Um, so I thought he ran really well. I don't have to ride him like that. I, now I have to think about five, six other horses in the race, not just a one horse. So I will ride him more conservative and, and give him the best the best chance he needs to uh, to win the race. Gotcha. And then have you handicapped the race already to kind of see? Or I, do you I do mean, that I, more I, day of? Yeah, I do more day of. I I I know. I said ninety eight percent of the horses were in the in the race. I had to watch a couple of horses that I didn't see them run, and I have to go back and watch the the, the right race that I like to see those those Japanese the Japanese horse. Um, so there's a couple of horses that I need to go back and watch and, and then a sport for most of them that I know, I know already that I watch the races and I follow them. Um, so I, I believe, I mean, I, I believe that I, I like to be in the first five or six horses going to that first turn where I'm comfortable enough and, and not battling too much in, into the middle of the pack and try to, uh, to make way, way too many moves. Uh, so coming out of there, coming, coming out of the gate, running to get a good position, go to the first turn. If I'm in the first five and six, I mean, I'll be really com comfortable with that. Gotcha. And then you mentioned the Japanese horse and obviously Christoph Lemaire is a very accomplished jockey. How much do you think having experience over the track and riding in this race previously gives you an advantage as a rider versus not, or does it? I mean, it does, it does give you a, a, an advantage, but I think, a jockey like him, they get adapted really quickly wherever he goes. Obviously, he's in the position that he is right now. He's a very confident rider that he learns very, very quickly. And I'm sure he's going to be doing the same homework that I do. You know, I, I just think that riders that come like that without much experience and that not even that doesn't have the experience here, but they do a lot of homework that, that, I, that I assume that he'll be do, doing the same thing that I do. So it, it, the advantage that you hear and you know the track really well, um, it helps for a jockey like him that does the homework and, and knows what he's doing. I mean, you can't count him out. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So in terms of how this race is shaping up and, and I know your time is hugely valuable and we don't need to go through every horse, but who are you thinking are some of the horses that you're most looking at of, of giving you a, a run in the race and who you need to watch out for and, and what is it looking like to you overall? Thank you. Um, I, I have to say a Smithson's horse. He's a horse that, I, that I'm looking to know today. I think he was the most impressive in all the preps going to, uh, uh, into the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Wyatt Barrow won pretty nicely. Um, he's a horse that's going to be close to the pace as well. Uh, there's a couple of the horses that I, that I, I just kind of think the names, I can't remember that, that it has some speed that are going to be close to the pace. But not as good as the as Mission Horse, the one that I actually uh, think he's probably the best uh, the horse to beat in the race. Now, over the recent years, and we've seen it tonight, obviously working for Baffert, and you've been riding for him, we kind of understand his training style of getting horses keyed up and, and having them near the lead, and they tend to last. 
does is that more kind of are we seeing more of that nowadays because the track is leading to allowing speed horses to last or is it also do you think let's say the track gets muddy and sloppy does it lend to a certain type of horse versus a speed horse well i mean some horses move up big time in the slab you know so those are horses that you have to watch out and but then again we have them and this kind of group that we have today i don't see races in the prior to the derby that they were sloppy you know, track. So we, right. it's hard to tell though, you know, uh, but some horses move up and they slap for whatever reason. They they don't seem to uh, uh, move up in the dirt as a, or the, in the dry dirt or track, as you said, that more than the slap. So that would be a, a horses to watch, you know, how they move in the day of the race, basically, you know, how do you watch them and how, how they look? And especially when you ride in the race though, you know, I mean, that's when you started watching it's okay, that horse looked like it's moving really good. and. And whether it's close to the pace or behind behind the horses that taking the kick back as well. So moving good and taking the, the kick back really good. So all the things that we have to watch while we're riding. Yeah. And I mean, you've been successful on the East Coast. You've been successful on the West Coast. You've ridden in preps all over the country. Do you feel that there's specific prep races that might get horses better prepared for the Derby than others? Or is it a case-by-case -case basis? Yeah, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. And especially when it depends on the horse. Too. Yeah. It all depends on the right. horse, really. Because, I mean, there are horses that can run on any track, and there are horses that don't really, once you take them out from, from one track, they don't they don't see. So, you know, those are things that, you know, okay, this horse comes to a different track, it's not the same horse. So uh, those are the, the easiest ones to read, or that it will surprise you that a horse that goes to a different track and it doesn't show his potential because he's out of the element. Uh, and if he runs good in a track like Churchill Down, uh, it will really surprise you. Right. No, it's, it's, it's always been interesting because, I mean, as a guy who obviously trained previously and, and understanding different tracks get horses fit differently, I had always felt that California tended to help, especially now that it's deeper, helps get horses a little bit tighter than some of the other tracks in Gulfstream would be the same with that sandier track that you get yes. a little bit more fitness out of it. Yeah, I, I definitely think that we, between Gulfstream and, and San Anita, the way it's shown the last few years, that the horses get a lot out of the races, though, and especially coming to the Kentucky Derby, so they last a lot longer. I gotcha. No, I mean it, it's it's very interesting as you kind of look as things go on. Um, I guess my next question is: You faced one of them. The other inexperienced horse in the race would be Charge It. Do you think? I mean, we've seen it with Justify. He won with just a couple starts. How much does race experience play, and do you think? some of these inexperienced horses could maybe step up in a race like this, or is it just a little bit too intimidating? Um, I have to say some horses can handle that. You know, it's a very, very little races, but it's not that many can handle it. They've got to be special horses, you know, so just like you said, Justify was a special horse, though, you know. There are not that many come that like, like him, though, you know, so uh, I think the experience uh, it has a lot to do with it, you know, um, unless they step up big from the prior race to, to the Kentucky Derby. And it's a really hard task to do in the Kentucky Derby. So uh, you have to watch those horses, obviously, because you, you, you saw that they, they, they have the potential to do it. But now it is, can they really step up again and do better than the last, the last race? So it's really hard. It's, it's, you got to be a special horse to, to do this with very little running and not much experience to win the derby you know that's why i mean the odds are against them really right and do you think a lot of that inexperience comes down to mental inexperience or maybe lack of physical preparation well, underneath it, the belt some horses are uh, uh, both mentally and physical they're, they're probably not ready to do what they're supposed to be doing right now and it's like but for the most part it's, it's a mental thing that they actually their body is solid but mentally they're not there yet but you know and they've been asked a little too much to do, you know, coming into Kentucky Derby, for Kentucky Derby. So those things had to play in, in, in place just to come here in the Derby and with the crowd and everything else. So, you know, it's, uh, it's hard on the horses. Now, as you ride horses, you do you feel them underneath you race? I mean, obviously, some horses might get sick in between a race or some horses might miss a work. Do you feel a physical progression under some of these horses? Absolutely. Like, let's say... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, when, from one race to the other one, when you get on the horses and you think, OK, I and mean, when they're running, you can feel the strength of the horse. Uh, that's the connection that you you have with the horses. And then 
uh, as soon as you start moving and the horses start running, oh yeah, you know, you, you can feel it right away. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense because part of it, and as I'm kind of going through this race, I'm looking at some of these horses and saying, okay, obviously to get ready for a mile and a quarter, you, it takes a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of work underneath the horse's belt to get them prepared to be able to last that distance. And, you know, the horse Taiba who won the Santa Anita Derby, there's been questions of, can he get the mile and a quarter? And what I've mentioned to people is, oh, I don't think it's a question of if he can, I think it's a question of, does he have enough fitness under the belt with the two preps and then the one six furlong work to be able to get the distance? How much do you think that plays into it in certain senses? I don't know. It had to be a lot. And again, he only had two races, you know, to come to the Kentucky Derby. I Listen, I wrote him, I won him. I think he's a very, very good horse. I just didn't think that he'll have that stamina to do what he did in the Santanita Derby. And to, for him to come back and do it again, and they can talk a little bit, man. He's gonna have to be a really, really special horse, man. And I, and don't get me wrong, I think he's a very, very good horse. I just, it's a really hard, hard thing to do. Again, they, I think the odds are against him, but you know, if he shows up like justified it, and then, then he's definitely one of the special horses, you know. Yeah. So, do you feel that there's an overall standout in this group? Because from looking at it from the outside, it seems like a pretty level field overall. Yeah, I think it's pretty wide open, and I, I think, like I said, it's like the, the one that I always fix in my mind, it would be it would be a Dustin horse. You know, I was very impressed when he won on the lead and got away. You know, uh, you know, went from the horses down the lane, and then the last race that he ran, I mean, came off the pace inside, came out running, and he he won very very impressive. So that's the horse that I, that he showed different. Uh, I, I would say a different size of him. I thought it's probably a horse that needs to be on the lead, and he didn't. He, he did it the right way, and it's slower pace, and came out of there running. Uh, that's impressive. Yeah, so I think he's, he's probably, to me, in my, in my head, the horse to be. Okay. Well, Johnny, I know you're really busy, and I appreciate you carving out time of your day. Obviously, you've got two very busy days ahead of you, so thank you for coming on Unfiltered and spending time with me. Um, hopefully we can catch up after the Derby. I'd love to hear your thoughts as everything plays out and going into the Preakness and, um, you know, just always That'll a pleasure great. chatting with you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Michael. Perfect. Well, have a great day and best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Nobody does it better.